Destination 100 million subscribers. Whew. So Susan, what video should I react to next? Okay, here we go. All right guys, so we are checking out The Odd Ones Out. I think that's the name of the channel. Um, usually uh, Susan or Fred, I keep forgetting because it's Fred now because Susan was the old one that sounded like a girl, but the new AI I have is a guy, Fred. So Fred, the AI, has told me to check out Growing Up Without Cable. So let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, let's go ahead and do our thing. <laughs> Imagine if Netflix, YouTube, and Hulu never existed. What would you be watching right now? Would you be watching this? I don't think so. You'd be watching this box right here. A television? On this device, instead of... That would upset me because, you know, YouTube got me all this money, so I'd be kind of mad if YouTube didn't exist, you know? Picking what you wanted to watch and when you wanted to watch it, the television would decide all that for you. And instead of watching a single five second skippable ad in the beginning, you'd have to watch five 30 second long unskippable ads. Can you think of anything more annoying? An advertisement right in the middle of your show? I don't know if my parents were being cheap or trying to discourage an unhealthy habit of watching too much TV, but growing up, my parents didn't have cable television at all in the house. Now, in this modern day and age of online content, some of you are living perfectly content lives without cable. I know I am. But you have to understand, in the early 2000s, online video wasn't a thing. Yeah, YouTube was created in 2005, but what did that have? This guy at a zoo? That's lame. So being an early 2000s kid, you had to get your cartoons through the TV. And if your parents didn't pay $65 a month to get cable, then you didn't get the channels with Spongebob, Jimmy Neutron, or Courage the Cowardly Dog. The only thing you I see what he means. Like, you really weren't getting any content, you know, uh, if you weren't paying a $65 price for cable. And now, you know, it's different because we live in a different world of online content and online gaming. And a lot of people just have a lot of, you know, internet capabilities now. You know, arguably, internet was very expensive back then. Or people just couldn't afford it back then as much. And it was very scarce. Now, almost everyone has an internet connection in their home. Got was this green brother and sister called PBS? And hell, people have internet connections on their phone, if anything. If they have data on their phone, they could just watch TV and play games on their phone. Like, arguably, it's better to be alive than ever because it's so accessible. It's kids. And whatever these things were. PBS Kids stands for Public Broadcasting Service. Kids. That meant all the shows on PBS Kids were government or privately funded. So the shows on PBS didn't really have any commercials per se, but they did have the same sponsorship ads that would play a message before every show. If you grew up on PBS Kids, then Juicy Juice and Where a Kid Can Be a Kid is just engraved in your memory. And also, every show would thank you, the viewer, for watching, and I think that's really nice. So. Everyone watching this, you're welcome. I'm kind of glad my parents didn't buy cable. Because instead of spending hours of my time watching mindless television, I spent hours of my time watching television with morals. And math. Yep, a lot of shows on PBS were either educational or taught you how to be a good person. The shows I'm going to mention had pretty crazy concepts, but the conflicts in each episode were very down-to-earth and slice of life -y, almost like the shows were made for children, like in Clifford the Big Red Dog. It's a show about this girl's dog who grew up to be the size of a... Fr I love that show. I grew up watching Clifford. That was actually a pretty good show. <laughs> freaking house for no reason, except for the fact that the girl loved the dog so much that he grew up to be a monster. So that means if your dog is normal-sized, you don't love it enough. And it probably doesn't love you. So, yeah, Giant Red Dog is a pretty weird premise, 
but the episodes were about everyday things. Like this blue dog feels bad that he tore up his owner's sweater, and his friends tell him to just be honest, and he does, and everyone's happy. Or the episode where this new dog moves into town, but he's missing a leg, and then Clifford and his friends have to learn that having three legs still means you can accomplish a lot of things any normal human can do. I mean, dog. And I rate this show a 10 out of 10. Next is Dragon Tales, the show that made dragons kid Oh, friend. I remember Dragon Tales. I remember that show. I loved it so much. Oh my god. There's Orc, he's the biggest, not so great of heart. There's Cassie, she's so shy, but so very smart. There's Zack and Wheezy, and their tales of fun. Cause you know two heads are better than one. Dragon Tales, Dragon Tales, it's almost time for Dragon Tales. The show was pretty similar to Clifford. The characters would spend an episode learning everyday things like how to do a cartwheel, or they would try to make it rain so they could show their friend what a rainbow looks like. And there was also this grandpa dragon who knew Spanish for some reason. Don't come too close, niños. And that wasn't the weirdest thing on the show, actually. There was also a dragon character in a wheelchair, which, just like Clifford, is a good character because it teaches kids that disabled people are still people who can accomplish a lot of things. But I think it's a weird combination of two things. A dragon, a mythical beast known for destroying cities, in a wheelchair? If you wanted to stop a dragon from destroying your city, then you just don't install wheelchair ramps anywhere. I should stop talking. I rate the show a 10 out of 10. Now let's talk about Arthur. Here's some fun trivia. Arthur is- Arthur, I grew up watching Arthur too. I, I remember Arthur. Arthur kind of reminded me of myself actually. To be an aardvark. Personally, I don't see Arlie, it. guys, comment down below. Arlie is Arthur. Arlie is Arthur. Basically, it was a show about Arthur and his other furry friends learning lessons, but Arthur tended to tackle more serious subjects than the other two shows. Like, they have episodes where DW hears her parents get in a fight and she worries about them getting a divorce, or the episode where Arthur Falcon punches his little sister, and even having to deal with someone you know getting cancer. What? Cancer? The character gets treatment and lives, by the way. Because <clears throat> it's a kid's show. 10 out of 10. Next, let's talk about my favorite show on PBS Kids. Cyber Chase. Cyber Chase, we're moving. We're beating the hacker at this game. Don't I've never seen that show. Ever. <laughs> This show didn't teach kids morals or how to properly treat the disabled. It taught them something far more important. Math. Cyber Chase is set inside a virtual computer world, and this one character named Motherboard was supposed to be the queen slash protector of this world, but she sucks at her job because the villain of the show, Christopher Lloyd, infects her with a virus. So now these three kids have to go on adventures using math principles. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I do know what this is. It's just... I remember it, I just didn't know the name of it. I've seen the bad show. guy's plans to save Mommy Board? Mother Motherboard? Mother Motherboard? Mommy. Mommy. We need to save Mommy Board. <laughs> and unlike all the other shows, this show had an overarching story. The kids would always get this close to saving Motherboard, but nothing they did worked. When I was a kid, I always wondered how much longer it would be until they finally saved her. And they never did. The show's been going on for 16 years. Wait. They're still... The show is still going on? You're kidding. Learning new math principles, trying to save Motherboard. I think they're at calculus at this point. The show is teaching you slower than an actual school. What kind of a show makes you wait 16 years for a conclusion? Cyber Chase does, and it's one of the best shows ever created. 10 out of 10. One last show I want to bring up is called Caillou. All you need to know about Caillou is that I hate him. Ca Here's the thing about Caillou. I've never really gotten into that show. I never really cared to watch it. <laughs> Caillou is a four-year-old and a demon. He constantly throws a tantrum whenever he doesn't get his way. Even in his theme song, he mentions how much of a brat he is. And then he's crying like a child. Well, you're going to have to grow up, Caillou. The world doesn't revolve around you. Now, you might be thinking, James, this kid is four years old. Of course he's going to be a brat. And I agree, but a big problem with Caillou isn't the fact that he's a brat, but it's with his spineless parents. Caillou's mom just lets him get away with everything. Whenever I misbehaved, you know what happened to me? I had to go sit in the timeout corner. You know what happens to Caillou? Nothing! Not once does Caillou ever get punished! It's always his mom who's 
being like, oh, you know, what you said wasn't very nice. Now go behave, okay? Zero out of ten with the show with just the humans. I hate it. I just realized that all the shows I mentioned were animated, <laughs> but there was a lot of non-animated shows that I still watched, but whatever, I could just say that these shows fit the theme of my channel. Or it could make a part two, I can do whatever I want. Now, as a die-hard PBS fanboy, I think I speak for everyone when I say that what PBS was missing was a crossover episode. How hard would it have been for the Clifford people and the Dragon Tails people to coordinate an episode where the three-legged dog finds the dragon scale, he could dig it up out of the sand? I mean, I think that would defeat the purpose of, you know, these channels or these shows on this channel, PBS, cross it. Like, it would defeat the purpose of them crossing over. They all had their own meanings and values, you know, like, it, it wouldn't make any sense. And because dogs like to dig, except this dog wouldn't be that good at digging. And then he would meet up with a wheelchair dragon and they could be best friends. I would have loved that. As much as I'm joking about it, as a kid, I actually really wanted a crossover episode between the shows Clifford and Clifford's Puppy Days. Which is another show that follows Clifford before he was interesting, when he was tiny. So, before Emily Elizabeth loved him. So there was a bunch of new characters that all knew Clifford when he was little, and the two shows existed in the same universe, so it wouldn't have been that unbelievable for Clifford to visit his childhood home, and then all the other characters... See, that would have made sense. See, now I see what he means. A Clifford, like, two different... Two, they're both the same character, but, like, it's one when he's younger and one when he's older. That would have made sense, because, of course, it may have been different supporting characters and things like that. That could have crossed over when he was older that didn't cross over otherwise. Drews, who used to call him small or squirt, would see him now and be like, Wow! What the f*** happened to you? You see, it's funny because it's a kid's show and you wouldn't expect them to say that. I waited patiently for that crossover episode, but it never came. <laughs> but at least I have fan fiction. George, he wagged his tail and smiled. Clifford, it's so good to see you. He nuzzled him as a greeting. Did he, said, did he show? Beginning. So what happened to? I guess he never put. In the month of May. That's because. I guess he never. I don't know if Magic School Bus was on PBS. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks so much for enjoying this video, and uh, peace.